Hello, Lutz. This session is about chewing and dressing of Q fluid grinding wheels. We have a wheel on the spindle on that machine that pulls too much power. And I would like to understand what we can do to compensate. The probability is that the wheel is loaded. Um, it may have lost its form. And I think it's going to be needed to true and dress the wheel so that we can bring that power level down again. Can you please explain how this is to be done? Yes, yeah, so I, I have a, a, a typical Q-flute wheel here. Um, and what, what we do is um, we would the, the one that's on the machine, the wheel would stay on the spindle. On the spindle, way on the spindle? It's so that we, when we true the wheel, we're truing it to the bore of the wheel so that everything runs concentrically um, and that we know that the form is in the right place. We know that there's no oscillation as it grinds and causes problems with burning uh, and finish. And chatter marks. Chatter marks, yes, yes, yeah. How does truing work. So what we would do, we would actually take the, the diamond wheel, we would, um, on the spindle, and we would take a bonded abrasive wheel, and we would actually rotate both of them um, in the uni direction, which means both wheels go in the same direction. Um, at a starting point, I would have this running about three times faster than the diamond wheel we're dressing. We want this to be harder when it's truing. Typically, the we would oscillate the wheel across the form of the wheel um, at about 800 millimeters a minute, an infeed of about five microns. And we want to keep going until we can hear and see that the whole form has been trued. Okay. What type of wheels are usually uh, recommended? The important rule is that the grit size of the bonded wheel must be larger than the grit size of the uh, diamond wheel to ensure that we can fully reform and grind the grits into the bond. In this case, I would recommend a silicon carbide grit 120. Um, uh, that, that will true this wheel fairly easily um, and it will make it uh, true to the bore. Okay, so after this truing, do we have a wheel that can go back to the machine? Not, not really. Uh, what we need to do is that the bond and the diamond grit is now blended together. Everything's true, but it's all blended together. The grits aren't exposed to cut. Um, on modern machines, uh, you can just run a higher feed rate to open it up without having to use a stick that we use to open it up. But in most cases, it's a stick. Um, and, and to do this, we have to continue rotating the wheel at the, the, the same wheel speed that uh, you will be grinding in. And same direction. In a, and in the same direction. That's, uh, you're quite right, Lutz. Um, you could do this inside the machine, or you could do it on the, the machine that you just trued it on. Um, and what you do is you push the stick into the wheel um, and there's a point where you feel resistance. Um, when, when it stops resisting, this is now cutting. So if you keep pushing, it, you, you go fast and then you start eroding the wheel away too much. So you, once you feel the resistance go, no more than four seconds is enough. Then this wheel should be ready to cut again. With this uh, trued and dressed wheel, we can now go back to the machine? Yes, it can go back on the machine and hopefully we'll see a much lower power draw. Okay, let's see that. So the first cutter is done. Um, let's see what the compar power comparison is. Yes, we, we've measured uh, the power before and after, and as we can see, the, this is the power before we trued and dressed the wheel, um, and it's 50% it's lower now after truing and dressing. Uh, this is very good, you would get much better performance, you can be able to grind faster. Okay. Thanks a lot for guiding us through truing and dressing of Q-Fluid grinding wheels, Peter. My pleasure, thank you.